So there it is. Let's catalog this. C sub t is 5.5 in the negative moment region. And C sub c, the distance from the neutral axis to the fiber, outer fiber that is in compression, would be 3.5. Now, move over to the right column. The reverse happens, because that is in the positive moment region. Does everybody follow this? OK. Uh, now, at this point, we are ready to we, we are ready to apply the equation. So let's apply the equation. Um, we start with the negative moment region. And sigma t, remember, the equation, the, 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 um, the equation is mc over i, all right? So the denominator is 97. It's 97 inches to the fourth. That was the moment of inertia it was given in this problem. Now, here, take a look. The 6,000, where do we get the 6,000? In the negative moment region, I'm going to go back. In the negative moment region, 6,000 happens to be the maximum moment. All right? Now, in this case, this is symmetrical. So the negative uh, moments, 6,000, are in both parts that are in negative. If it weren't, you would use the, the higher value. Remember, absolute value is what you go by. All right? OK. So everybody knows where the 6,000 came from. Then what's the unit of the 6,000? 6,000, if you look at the, uh, the units, it's foot-pounds. M is foot-pounds. What about the C sub T? C sub T is 5.5 inches. So we need a conversion factor. Write it down. We need a conversion factor. Why? Because 6,000 is in foot-pounds. 5.5 is in inches. And if you look at the denominator, 97 is in inches to the fourth. So um, we need a conversion factor. And the conversion factor here is 12. So please make a note to yourself why we are using that 12. Then let's move on to the bending stress in compression. Again, we're still in the negative moment region. So what we have is. 6,000 times 12, which is the conversion factor. Now we multiply by C sub C, which is 3.5, divided by the moment of inertia, which is given, 97. Let's move over to the uh, positive moment region. In the positive moment region, what do we have? Um, we have uh, the moment, which is 7,500. And uh, tell me, that 7,500 is foot-pounds. Multiply 12, that's the conversion factor. 3.5 is C sub t now, because the, the curvature is in the, uh, the opposite direction now. C sub c, 7,500 foot-pounds. Everybody knows where we got that now. This is C sub C is 5.5. All right? We get all the numbers together. Let me see if I can change this color. And here's what we're going to do. The problem asks for the maximum bending in, um, in tension. So we compare. Bending and tension, we compare 4,082 and 3,247. Which one is higher? 4,082. So that's the answer for bending stress and tension. That's the maximum. What about in compression? In compression, we end up, we have two values. Um, we have 2,598. And we compare that with what? 5103. So which one is the higher? This one. All right? Now, 
let me see if I can erase some of these things. Because I want to point out a few things to you guys um, before we move on to the next uh, slide. Uh, and this is very important that you understand a few items of interest uh, here. Uh, you may ask, uh, or you may, uh, on the test, you may wonder, if, you, if you're given this problem, you look at the moment, uh, moment diagram, you say, OK, the maximum moment here is 7,500. Do you guys follow? You may say, 7,500 here is the maximum moment. So I just plug that in to my MC over I equation. And if you do that, guess what you get? You will come up with these sets of values. Now, you will pick up one of the correct answers, 5103. But you will miss. You will get 3247, which will be incorrect. You will miss the 4082 here. You know why that happens? Because C sub C and C sub T flip-flop when you have beams subjected to both positive and negative moments. So do you always need to analyze, do a double analysis for these problems? The answer is no. And I'm going to tell you, uh, I'm going to go back to the slide before, and I want to explain something to you. This is extremely important for the test. If you get a problem like this, you need, to, you need to think about the following analysis. Assess it this way. Ask yourself, is the cross-section symmetrical or non-symmetrical? If the cross-section of the beam, for a problem like this, if the cross-section of the beam is symmetrical, for example, if it's a rectangle, or if it's an I, symmetrical I-beam, then you do not need to do double analysis. All right? However, if the cross-section that's given is non-symmetrical, like this one, if it's non-symmetrical, like this one, then you look at the moment diagram. If the moment diagram, the entire moment diagram is positive, or the entire moment diagram is negative, then you do not need to do double analysis. However, however, if you um, if you see a moment diagram that's similar to what I'm showing you, in other words, part of the beam is subjected to positive moments, some are subjected to negative moments. In addition to that, the cross-section is non-symmetrical, like this one, then definitely you need to do a double analysis like this. In other words, separately calculate the negative moment region and then the stress in the positive moment region. I hope that's uh, clear to you. Uh, there was a question by Matthew. Matthew Wilson says, uh, how likely is it that we get 3247 as an as a, uh, option on the test? I assume you're looking, you're giving me the number, numerical value, 3247. It is very unlikely that, that they will give you a, a, an exact number like that. In a case like this, they would either say nearest to 3200 PSI, uh, or 3240, something, uh, I, I, and I hope that's, uh, I, I answered your question. Uh, um, and Wesley, yes, symmetrical about both axes. Amanda, yes, you can, but it also depends on the uh, moment, shape of the moment diagram.
All right, now, this uh, Matthew Youngblood brought, uh, brings up the, the, the subject of uh, distractors. And Matthew, you get the idea, yes, 3247 could be, or 3240 could be in there as a, as a distractor. But guys, let me also, before we move to the next slide, show you another distractor here. For a problem like this, they would give you the answer without the without this conversion factor of 12. All right, you see that? Um, let me see if I can uh, change the color. I've got too many colors here. You see this, the 12 that you and I agreed on using for all of these, the conversion factor? Well, one of the distractors that I, I would be certain they would use is giving you a value. I do not have it here, but they would give you a number that you would calculate without using the the proper conversion factor. And that is a, guys, that's a very, very common distractor value. Uh, so please uh, stay away from it. Let's move on to uh, uh, slide number 18. Slide number 18, uh, um, slide number 18 shows you the, the concept of what we call section modulus. Those of you who are structural designers, especially if you design with steel, design steel structures, you are very familiar with this concept of section modulus. The rest of you, don't worry about design of a building. All I want you to do is please learn the concept of section modulus. Section modulus. In this case, S. The section modulus is S, and that's defined as I over C. I is the moment of inertia about the neutral axis. C is the value of C that we've been talking about, C sub C, C sub T. All right? So by definition, section modulus is equal to I over C. And if you combine these two two equations, S is equal to I over C, bending stress is MC over I. If you combine it, then sigma, bending stress, comes out to be M over S, moment divided by the section modulus. Designers of steel structures use this concept a lot to decide the dimension and the, the, what's, what, uh, what size beam to choose. In fact, um, I will demonstrate this to you uh, next week, I will I will have an example problem. How do we use? It's not a difficult concept, but how do we use the concept of section modulus to decide the dimension of a uh, necessary steel beam? I'll show you exactly how that's done. But for now, please remember uh, these equations. However, on the test morning morning, and also sometimes the structures in the afternoon, but we're talking about the breath exam. They will give you a uh, certain uh, amount of information. They ask you, what is the section modulus for this beam? For this beam that we've been talking about, the last two or three slides, the section modulus would simply be 97 divided by 5.5. Does everybody see how we got that number? You know, they'll ask you, what is the section modulus? You should be able to remember or be able to look up that section modulus is I over C. I is 97. C is, in this case, 5.5. You may ask, well, you know, there are two C values. One was what we call C sub C. The other one C sub T. Well, guys, use the larger of the two, all right? The, use the larger of the two Cs because this would be the critical section modulus. Just remember this. Because it, it, this has showed up on the test before. OK, let's move on. I'm on slide 19. And we are continuing this uh, uh, problem. A couple of you are asking me uh, why 5.5, not 3.5. Um, well, because if you use the higher value in the denominator, that will give you the critical value. It will give you the smaller section modulus. Uh, 